our first contestant this evening is Flight Lieutenant John Smith. He's a married man. His hobbies are tennis and skiing. He served with the Royal Air Force for just eight months and has just started basic flying training. Now, Flight Lieutenant, your specialist subject is the Martin Baker Mark 8 ejection seat and you have just two minutes on this subject starting now, with the Mark 8, what is the minimum speed on the ground for a successful ejection? Oh. To avoid collision, what is the minimum time between front and rear seat ejection? Oh. If nothing happens during a low-level ejection, your parachute fails to deploy, what must you do? Magnus is two minutes to answer those questions, doesn't give much time, but you'll have a lot less when it's for real. Well, it looks as if he got the message okay, but let's get back to the seat and see just how it works, particularly when it's fitted to the Tucano. The whole escape system is made up of three basic parts. The canopy fracture system, that's the micro detonating cord, MDC, built into the acrylic which will shatter before ejection. The ejection seat, in this case there's one in the front and one in the rear. And the drogue and parachute, which are pressure packed into these head boxes. We can look at one or two points about the seat while it's in the aircraft. Normal pre-flight checks are carried out and strapping in is perfectly straightforward and better practiced on a training seat. That important, indeed vital bit of kit, the firing handle, is in its usual place between your thighs on the front of the seat pan. Seat height is adjusted by this switch on the left-hand side of the console. The MDC pattern on the front canopy differs from the rear because the front acrylic is thicker than the rear for bird strike protection. There's a seat MDC interconnection which controls individual canopy fracture. But horns on the rear seat and breaker knives on the front seat go through the canopy if all else fails. The seat pin is stowed on the left-hand side of the canopy frame. Let's now have a look at the seat in isolation. It's made up of the ejection gun with guide rails, the seat pan, the personal survival pack, the parachute container, and the harness, which secures you to the parachute by integral lift webs and to the seat by harness locks. Five point restraint is by two upper locks, two lower locks, and the negative G-strap and lock. At the upper end of the negative G-strap is the quick release fitting. Your shoulder harness allows a certain amount of movement, which is controlled by an inertia reel. With the go-forward lever aft, you're locked. With the lever forward, you can move by about 30 centimeters. Okay, John, let's see what happens if we say, eject, eject. Oh, yes, we better have a pin. Now, eject, eject. It's okay, it's not live, don't panic. Pulling that handle, fires three cartridges in sequence, which extend the telescopic ejection gun. The barrel of the gun is fixed to the aircraft. The seat is attached to the sliding tubes. Now, slowed down. During ejection, the sliding tubes extend. The outer tube forms an extension of the gun barrel and remains with the aircraft. The inner tube goes with the seat. 
Full sequence from the moment the handle is pulled. Gases from the firing unit operate various systems almost simultaneously. First, to the harness power retraction unit, firing its cartridge to pull your shoulders back against the seat and lock the straps. To the ejection gun, to fire the primary cartridge, which releases the top latch and unlocks the seat from the gun barrel. Gases then pressurize the center tube, push the seat upwards, and fire the MDC. The breaker knives push the canopy clear as the seat accelerates up the guide rails. The static rods withdraw sears from the drogue gun and the barostat. The static cables disconnect the command ejection system, main oxygen supply, and the mic tell connection. The emergency oxygen supply is selected on and the regulator set to 100%. The leg restraint lines are pulled downwards through the snubbing units and hold your legs. The shear pins break, freeing the lines from the floor. At the same time, the primary gases fire the secondary cartridges in turn. After 0.6 of a second, the drogue gun fires and pulls out the drogue. The drogue is fully deployed approximately one second after pulling the handle. A time delay mechanism and a main barostat delay the firing of the cartridge depending on your altitude. The barostat is normally set at 10,000 feet. If you eject above 10,000, you and the seat descend rapidly, stabilized by the drogue. Below 10,000, the time mechanism is not inhibited and the barostat operates a one and a half second time delay before the cartridge fires. As the cartridge fires, the gases simultaneously operate the piston to release the drogue shackle, the top harness release, the harness bottom locks, and fire the standby cartridge of the drogue gun. The release of the drogue shackle frees the drogue from the seat, deploying the main parachute. At this point, you should let go of the firing handle, otherwise you'll be left hanging on to the seat. As the main parachute develops, it lifts you out, pulling the seat pan stickers from their clips, and the leg restraint lines run out through the garter rings. The PSP also separates from the seat and your locator beacon switches on. If at this point you think your troubles are over, if the automatic ejection system fails, the sequence can be restarted by the manual override. This detonates a cartridge under the seat, which fires the BTRU and the drogue gun, starting the automatic sequence from wherever it stopped. Now let's look at command ejection. To make sure front and rear seats don't collide, there's a minimum delay of 1.4 seconds between rear and front ejection. With the command ejection lever in the on position, when the rear seat firing cartridge detonates, gases are fed to the command selector valve, firing its cartridge, and at the same time, the front seat retraction unit operates. Rear seat ejection continues as in a normal sequence. After 1.4 seconds, the command breach cartridge fires the front ejection gun, and we're back on course for a normal ejection.
For a successful ejection at low levels, the aircraft needs to be substantially straight and level to give the maximum upward vector. This vector is reduced by bank, by pitch, or if the aircraft is descending. The minimum parameters for a successful ejection using the Mark 8 seat are ground level at 70 knots with the aircraft straight and level. Your future aircraft is most likely to have a rocket seat. These camera records show a Tucano seat at ground level with 70 knots IAS. Now, a rocket seat. You can see the difference yourself. The message is clear. You must eject in time. Indecision, because you don't know the answers, could be fatal. And now, Flight Lieutenant, you pass on the following. With the Mark 8 seat, what is the minimum speed on the ground for a successful ejection? 70 knots. To avoid collision, what is the minimum time between front and rear ejection? 1.4 seconds. If nothing happens during a low-level ejection, your parachute fails to deploy, what must you do? Pull the manual override handle. And there was one successful ejection at the 1989 Paris Air Show.